what is up everybody welcome to the bronx pinstripe show happy fourth of july weekend to everybody we're brought to you today by oakley they have established themselves as the sunglasses company made for activities and if you're watching us on youtube scott's got his Ma monster oakley's on Monsters. wearing them indoors it's where are you are you in jersey no i'm in uh bethany beach delaware okay my mother's place so it's I got a lot, I got lots of windows in front of me, so it's sunny. Is it I'm basically sunny? outside. Yeah. Is it's sunny? Okay, well it's it's yeah, not it's sunny. sunny today can here. See it? Can you see it in my massive in my massive? I can glasses? see the reflection. Yes, I can I can see the reflection. You can grab a pair of Oakleys for yourself by going to Oakley.com to check out all of their amazing products. Happy Fourth of July week weekend. It being on a Tuesday just makes this thing <laughs> dragging out. And now if I was a younger man with no kids, I would absolutely love this four day weekend. It's great but for everybody. With, with two children and daycare closed Monday and Tuesday, I am praying for Wednesday to arrive. <laughs> yeah, that's funny because I was uh we were texting back and forth about when we were going to record and and the whole the whole no daycare uh, situation uh, eluded my brain. I forgot about that one and uh, it throws a little wrench into the situation. It certainly does, especially when you have a newborn. So. Um, you know, kudos to the family for for uh, for helping out and all and all the things. But um, yeah, happy Fourth of July to everybody. I like that it's on a Tuesday because it gives you a free Monday, and sure. uh, and and then you can you know extend uh, extend everything, extend the festivity. So yeah, we're we're out in Delaware, um, gonna be hitting the hitting the pool most likely. A little late to go to the beach because you got to get there at like seven in the morning to to secure a spot, you know, parking and on the beach here. And then uh, so yeah. Big pool. Kemp's going to go nuts. He's uh, got I got a couple buddies coming over and uh, that that I went to school with. They got a bunch of kids, so we're going to have a little little melee. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, my because like you said, daycare's closed and newborn Leanne's basically been on newborn duty because she feeds and sleeps. That's all she does. And I've been on Harrison duty. So Saturday with the double header, I knew that my one chunk of time to watch baseball this weekend was going to be that first game of the doubleheader because Harrison was napping for, for most of that first game. And I finally hung a TV here in my basement slash office uh, after two years of living in this house. It's, it's right over my monitor here. So I wasn't well, for, sitting You've down only and, been in the basement for a month, sure, two months, right? But I mean, anyway, so I, I hung the TV on, on Saturday morning. And, um, you know, I wasn't going to sit down and watch the game because I'm not allowed to do that anymore. But I was doing things in my basement, cleaning up the basement, watching that game. And just like uh, I can I do what was... I want in my basement. <laughs> just yeah, it's my only it's my only space. now. <laughs> um, and just like that other game, I don't even remember who they played, where they were down like eight nothing by the time I turned it on. Another stinker in the one game that I can actually focus on. Uh, Luis Severino, as you were pointing out before we started recording. Pretty odd start from him because he looked good his first time through the Cardinals order. Cardinals can hit. They can't pitch, but they can hit. Well, they can but, pitch this week for the most part. But yeah, this weekend. Once it got to that third time through the order, they were squaring him up and he was missing location. Every ball, if you go back and watch the replay, every ball that was hit hard, it was a missed location. Even the, the ball to Goldschmidt, which was a good piece of hitting. He had to go down and get that slider. But that slider was supposed to be outside of the zone away. And it ended up being low in the zone, but in the middle of the zone. And so Goldschmidt went down and shot that ball to right field. So I'm looking and you just use, use your eye test here. Watch where the catcher set up, watch where the pitch is and how the catcher Higgy was reaching for every single pitch that Severino threw. And when the catcher has to reach across the plate, generally the ball is going to get lined somewhere in the field. Yeah. So it was, a, it was definitely a weird start for him because you know, he didn't give up a, a hit right until the third, as we said. And, um, you know, usually when Seve's struggling, he struggles early and then you, you know, he settles into the game. We, we've talked about that in the past where he's kind of an anomaly in the sense that you can leave him in, even if he's given up five, six runs going into the fifth and sixth inning, because he can find that, that second gear, second and third gear and, and really, uh, settle into a game. Whereas this, in this game, you know, he had a, a clean first uh, first first couple innings and then and then the third inning, 
the wheels fell off. And yeah, like that piece of hit, Goldschmidt's just an unbelievable hitter. And the Cardinals, I said this before we came into the series, like they scare me because I don't think they're as bad as they, they their record says they are. Obviously, their pitching has been struggling pretty much the entire year. But my God, do they have just a bunch of country corn fed, uh, you know, massive guys that up and down that lineup that just mash. Uh, every one of them, it seems like, just mash. And, yeah, if you look uh, at their so offense, they're a scary they score, they score 4.61 runs per game. And if you compare that to the Yankees, 4.43 runs per game. Um, so they're slightly better than league average. But you're right. It's the players in that in the middle of that order, Goldschmidt, Arenado, um, that that definitely scare you. Yeah, but then you you have a bunch of you have a bunch of you know Donovan kid who's just uh out there. Donovan he had just, a great day Sunday. Yeah, new bar hit a home run. Uh, and you look uh, at them; they're all Foreman just hit a home run. Beefy, <laughs> they're just big dudes, man. They're big dudes. Jordan, uh, uh, Jordan Hicks is the pitcher. Uh, what's the 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 rookie Jordan uh, that was put his outfielder? Anyway, he's he's an unbelievable. You know, uh, again, like another just massive human being playing baseball. So they have. They have the the look for sure, and I don't think you're going to keep this team down too much longer. I I do believe they're going to make a run, and uh, and and we'll see. Uh, I would wouldn't now might be some good good bets. Uh, put some money on them to win that division, and you might be able to make some cheese. Well, they're talking about potentially trading pieces at the deadline. I don't see it happening. Even someone like Montgomery, who is having a good season and is a free agent after this year. He's been their only solid pitcher. We were looking at his numbers. He's actually, he was very good once he got to the Cardinals in the second half of last year after the trade. He's been actually better this year, slightly better uh, with the Cardinals this year than last year with the Cardinals. 132 ERA plus this season versus 127 ERA plus with the Cardinals in the second half of last year, just so everyone's on the same page as us. 100 is league average, so he's been 32% better by ERA than league average this year with the Cardinals. Yeah, he's a good he's he's good uh and when you see him uh against the Yankees he turns on another gear. <laughs> he had a what he had a no hitter This going is going to be revenge week. Inning. You realize this. Montgomery yesterday and we got Hicks coming to town this week. It was Montgomery and uh Gallegos came in right afterwards and That's right. And but Gallegos too, so. is like was he ever really a Yankee? That was like 8 years ago. Was it, it was a long was time that ago. Trade for? Luke was that Voigt. the Voight trade? That was the yeah. Voight trade. Who's now? It was, the, it was the Voight trade, and it, it. But you just see that you know it's just salt with uh with the with the two guys that come in and close, uh close the day to to beat your your the guy that you paid an exorbitant amount of money for, um to to win the game. Uh, Jordan Walker, by the way, is the yeah. name I was looking for. But um, yeah, man, I just uh the I I'm so surprised. I was I was listening to the uh, the radio broadcast yesterday of the second game for the for the most part too and i was looking at um uh they were talking about the um the catcher they got from the cubs uh Contreras, and that he was in like a defensive slump that he's been in a defensive slump it's like this oh yeah it's strange it's a strange way to talk about because you don't hear that very often especially from uh from the catcher and it's a he's an offensive guy mostly but um he you know, he just hasn't been able to to command the the pitching rotation well, for the Cardinals. And you wonder how much of that new catcher coming in from a guy with Molina, who's been there for years and years and years, how, you know, what the, the, the obviously there's a gap in, in the way that the pitchers are throwing to him and the big struggle for them has been on the pitching side. So you wonder how much of that comes into play with a new catcher in a, in a system that that's had the, the mainstay Hall of Fame guy for, you know, forever, it seems like. Um, they said he called a cutter. I think it was in the London series. He called a cutter and the pitcher didn't throw a cutter. And the pitchers like step, took like a step off. Like, what, what are you talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's That's weird, right? It's a weird, it's a weird thing to hear about. That's so, obviously it's like, and also how do you call a cutter if, cause the, the, the way I guess you just, now you with just the, put yourself in a mental pretzel right now. I could just, we <laughs> no, all watch. So it. if you have, when you used to do the hand signal, the finger signals, right? The the numbers Back were the based days. on what the pitcher threw, right? If the pitcher didn't throw a cutter, number two wasn't going to be a cutter. It was going to be a changeup, maybe, depending on the pitcher's arsenal. Right. But now, maybe with uh, Pitchcom, because it can speak to you, yeah. it's like you can just do the buzzes, but it can also speak to you in the, the robot voice, right? You could say cutter, 
slider. It could be John Sterling's sweeper. Voice. It could be any voice you want. Right. Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Remember when you used to get, you get the map quest with Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice? So maybe that's how it is. Really but dating like, yourself there, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> was it was it the map quest? What was it? What was that I thing? Don't know. You'd have to like plug it into the cigarette lighter on your I choose your to not car. enter this conversation. <laughs> After my John Starks uh call out. <laughs> But that's, I guess, how you call a cutter for someone who doesn't throw a cutter. Yeah. No, it's strange. So, you know, you, you wonder that you, you see this, obviously, the second half in front of them um, with with just more time as a, as a battery. And again, like this team can score runs. And I, I promise they will be scoring runs as the summer uh, moves moves forward and the humidity starts hitting the Midwest and all the things. So, um, yeah, I expect them to be better. I really do. And I think they're not a bad team. Just playing they're, badly. Like yeah, again, like their pitching has to get better. Their pitching was was decent in the series. Uh yeah. had the Yankees down pretty much. Yeah, Flaherty again, was good. People, Montgomery was good. The back of the bullpen was for the most part good. So I think sometimes and maybe I fall into this too, but people are blinded by the offensive outburst that the Yankees sometimes have against teams like Oakland, right? Like they score double digit runs in those last two games against Oakland. Reminder, once again, Oakland has the worst pitching staff in Major League Baseball. Okay? Yeah. So you score 10 runs against Oakland. Okay, fine. You should be scoring runs off of a bad pitching staff in St. Louis, but for the most part, they didn't. And this the Yankees offense still is not good, and especially without Judge. The, the, there's just been a lack of consistency from the veterans in, in that order. And that, that's not been changing. Sometimes they have good nights, and sometimes they can score runs. But for the most part, they don't score runs. Like you saw yesterday, Jordan Montgomery out pitching Garrett Cole. Like add that to Cole's resume and really add that to Brian Cashman's resume of on the mound, Jordan Montgomery out pitching Garrett Cole there. Well, it's, you know, one of these things that you don't want to see too is in Harrison Bader goes in, what was he? 0 for seven and Jordan Montgomery, Harrison Bader gets the, uh, the standing ovation from the, the extremely think nice Hicks is going to get an ovation crowd. this week at Yankee stadium. No, he's not going to get an ovation. Not even, not even a little bit. Will it I think be a resounding one. standing boos? I don't know if there'll be boos. I don't know if there'll be boos. I'm sure there'll be boos, some boos. But what would be more insulting? Like literally zero reaction when he steps to the plate. Just like just another Oriole coming to the plate. Everyone's just eating their hot dogs and drinking their beer. Like, oh, Aaron Hicks is up. Who gives a crap? <clears throat> boos or a sarcastic ovation? I think a sarcastic ovation would be the most insulting. I like think a, what you're going to get drawn out six minute standing ovation. Okay. <laughs> I, I think what you're going to get is stop is a the game mix. ovation for Aaron Hicks. <laughs> you're going to get a mix. You're going to get a little bit of uh you're going to get people clapping for the guy because he's been on the team for a minute. No one's going to clap. Some people will. And then and then you'll get some some low booze. But for the most part, it's just like, you know. I don't have much feeling here. It's just, can we just move forward? It is what it is. Like, of course you're hitting there. It's a, it's like, I'm not even going to get up and, and acknowledge the, the boo or the clap. It's not worth it anymore. Well, if you believe the old Reggie saying they don't boo nobodies, that boos are actually the biggest compliment. If Aaron yeah. Hicks gets booed so when he comes boo. to the plate, just, just that be means quiet. exactly move... that silence. That means you cared about Hicks. No, no, no. No reaction or sarcastic ovation. That's what I want for Aaron Hicks. Because yeah. guess what? Guess what Aaron Hicks is doing with the Baltimore Orioles? He has an 861 OPS. I mean, this, the, yeah, of course. The the guy is... Motivated. Uh, rejuvenated. Which pisses me off beyond belief. It really does. It just, it just, it bothers me when I see that. Because, and I know there's so many people going out there saying, well, the Yankees, people come out and they're still playing well with the Yankees. Oh, bullshit. Not, not him. Don't use that example with this guy. This guy, this guy had... Whatever it was going on, you know, the, the, the lack of motivation, the disrespect that he felt, all these things, it felt like it was, you know, Aaron Hicks against the, the world when he was here. And he, he, he essentially just like acted like, uh, you know, everybody was against him for whatever reason. So this little, I, I don't buy, I don't buy the fact that, you know, a new place was, was, um, or that the Yankees were holding him back by any means. It, like a lot of it was mental on his side and, and for whatever reason, just couldn't, couldn't get over the hump in this uh, in this town, and and then and then had a really bad attitude about it at the same time. So there was a, um, I think it was on the Athletic, an article posted 
that about Aaron Hicks coming back to town and they talked to him and he was quoted basically saying he saw the writing on the wall since spring training when they were, they kept prioritizing guys like Oswaldo Cabrera and Jake Bowers ahead of him. And wasn't it this spring that Brian Cashman said he expects Aaron Hicks to win the job? Was that this off season or this spring, right? Like that wasn't last year. Like that was before this season. Well, Brian Cashman said. Because Aaron said, Hicks is coming in healthy. You expect Aaron Hicks to be the player. This is a guy that, of course, he's going to say that because at, at a certain point, you have to give a, a nod of confidence to a guy that you just, you signed for 10 years, who's now coming back as a healthy player, right? You, you, you have to believe that, or you have to want to believe that he's going to you know, prove you right at some point and, and try to, you know, add some consistency. If you're healthy and you're out there playing, you should be able to do the things that they thought you should do. And it just, just wasn't the case. So um, I'm looking up because I, I do believe he was given an opportunity to, to win the, so Aaron Hicks this spring actually had a decent spring <laughs> had a 798 OPS in spring, 41 plate appearances or 41 at bats this spring. So, yeah, I don't know. He was – yeah, I, I I don't think you can use the um, – like you said, you can't say, oh, Aaron Hicks left and then became a better player. Like he was given opportunities to be a good player with the Yankees. Um, and it's just a, another frustrating thing that a player is, is succeeding elsewhere. Um, like Montgomery has been succeeding. He's doubled Harrison Bader's war since that trade. Harrison Bader, 1.3 war produced for the Yankees. Jordan Montgomery, 2.6 war produced for the Cardinals. Harrison Bader has been injured a good chunk of time. So that factors into it. If you're not on the field, you can't produce war. But that's also part of what you traded for Harrison Bader. You traded for a guy who was injured, and then he spent time on the injured list last year. And then he's been on the injured list twice this year so far. So you trade for an injury guy, and he spends time on the injured list. I'm sorry. That's that's not bad luck. Well, no, that's not bad luck. It's also – yeah, but it's also um, going after a guy – no, see, that's the thing. When you look at this, we're talking about Hicks and then, and then you start talking about another center fielder at the same time. It's like the, the misdiagnosis of center fielders, whether it's injury or, or talent, uh, has been plaguing this team. They're not that dissimilar. That's what, like, I like Harrison Bader, but I also at a point liked Aaron Hicks too, because yeah, of course. when he's on the field, he's a productive player. And you could have said that you did. We did say that about Aaron Hicks, 2017, 2018, when he was on the field, he was a productive player. Then he wasn't on the field a lot, which is why I said, don't give him a seven-year contract. And I'm saying the same thing about Harrison Bader. Don't give him a long-term contract. You, if, if he is going to take a three-year contract, fine. Yes, sign him. But if he's looking for a five-plus-year contract, do not sign him because he will not be on the field enough. It's true. I mean, that's, that's the thing. The, the, the th Here's the problem with the, the logic in that, too, though, is that when you don't have – when you don't have a center fielder uh, that's ready to go and, and you're, you're looking into your minor leagues and you're developing a player and you could argue that there are some players down there, but they're, they're not ready to, to one, take <clears throat> over a job in the next year or two. Uh, and they haven't been, you have to take a, a bit of a gamble when you see the talent you have to. And it goes back to the argument of like, uh, you know, the, the conversation that we were having about injuries and in today's game, you have to take some kind of a risk within it. Like, I understand it's not, when you see the injury players and you have a complete leg to stand on with your argument here, because it's happening, it's happening in real time. The injuries are, are taking over these guys' careers, but at some point you have to believe that they're going to stay healthy. You have to believe that the talent is going to persevere and you have to believe that they're going to stay on the field. Why do you it, have to it, believe that? Because you can't predict the injuries because sometimes you get an injury you can't guy predict that just doesn't health. get injuries. You, you can't predict health when a guy has not been able to stay healthy. Now That's what I'm saying. So, so you have you to evaluate have... talent and then at some point you have to believe in your medical staff. No, here's why. Uh, here's the argument against signing Bader. It's because if you use the Hicks example again, where you sign that penciling in Aaron Hicks, our center fielder for the foreseeable future, because when he's on the field, he is a elite defender and a offensive and he produces offensively. He's not great offensively, but he produces offensively. The problem that bit Hicks and the Yankees is he didn't get on the field. So then you had a hole in center field. And if you have a hole in center field, that's a much bigger hole than if it's on a corner outfield spot or something like that, because center field is the, is the most important position in the outfield. And if you have someone backing up center field, that's maybe taking judge away, putting him in center field or putting IKF in center field. It hurts your entire outfield. It hurts your entire defense. 
So you're Hurt taking your third a gamble. Then you have to put Orlando Cabrera, who's making uh, Orlando you know, Cabrera, the 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 Miami, the Florida <laughs> Marlin, Orlando Cabrera. So. <laughs> You realize John Sterling has called him Orlando Cabrera a thousand times. Yeah, and right? I was just listening to, to to John Sterling talking. So Oswaldo Cabrera making double double errors over at third base, who's probably like the fourth guy you want over there at third base. And because the defense is is so shuffled around, they're getting in their own heads. I understand your point. So then go out and sign a big name yes. center fielder. Uh-huh. That, that's, that's what right. you have to do, right? That's what you have to do. And you make sure to... that there's no injuries on his on his history because if there are injuries, then all of a sudden you're going to get killed if this guy goes down for two months a season. And, maybe, and... but if you're <clears> – <throat> but maybe – I also understand your point is that like it's basically impossible to find a co- perfectly clean injury history, especially in today's game, right? But some guys get injured less often. So like maybe bank on one of those guys staying healthier than someone like Bader who, and it does kill me because I like Bader a lot. Like when he's on the field, I really like him and I like that he's from, from the area and he seems to love being a New York Yankee and he's animated. And I like all of that. If you can get him on a reasonable short term, shorter term deal, definitely sign him. All all that being said, you know, they're going to resign him, right? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yes okay. i do know that just, all right if we're doing this if, if they sign him for five six seven years and we're still doing this podcast in five six seven years i'm gonna be sitting here yelling about how oh you're a dumbass for signing harrison bader for six years and guess what he's not healthy well i i think a lot of it does come into play with what you believe for jason dominguez i know we're going on down a rabbit hole here but uh, they do have. It's a very a relevant that, rabbit hole with the whole Cardinals thing because, like, it true. was basically a year ago, right? Like, weren't the Yankees? Didn't they get swept in St. Louis about a year ago? It was, um, yeah. It was about. It was well, yes. It was like July. Montgomery, it was after. No, because it was Montgomery after the deadline. Us. Yes, and also Frankie Montas got shelled in right. his start against the Cardinals, similar to how freaking Severino and Montgomery just got shoved bombed. bats on our throats. Yes. Yeah, so it was so, early August that they got swept. And they didn't get swept this weekend, but you you salvaged one of the doubleheader games. Bravo, guys. If you're looking at the the future and you're looking at center field and you're you're considering Harrison Bader as a guy that you're probably going to have to sign for like you said 5 to 7 years, right? And and then you you know you have uh, Dominguez coming up and and he could be the center fielder of the future for a very long time. Now it's 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 on the Yankees to identify and make sure that they're right on on the development piece and and you know can he give you Harrison Bader level production or close to it at minimum is that is that the floor is the floor of Jason Dominguez at the pros Harrison Bader and he's team controlled you can you can you can have him for a, a long time possibly even buy out arbitration years and extend him for even longer at a reasonable rate so like there's a value piece right there if you can do it. If, if he's that guy, if they believe that he's that guy, otherwise you make a deal and you, you find someone else who does believe he's that guy and you go get a, re, a center fielder that, that has proven. And that's, or looking at Reynolds, like that so, deal that he signed with the, with the pirates was, was absolutely a value for that team. And the fact that you know, Reynolds I mean, has been healthy, Reynolds has been on the field, right? But a deal that couldn't, uh, it, that's, what's crazy to me is that you, nobody could make a, a deal for that guy. Um, that is given crazy. what that, he signed for is wild. So the the crazy thing though that about your what you were just talking about is when they signed Hicks for seven years after the 2018 season or was it after the 20 yeah after the 2018 season we were literally saying okay great this is the bridge to Jason Dominguez and here we are talking about signing Harrison Bader for a long term contract saying that's the bridge to Jason Dominguez. Oh no hold on no 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 I'm not saying he's the bridge to Jason Dominguez I'm saying you're probably going to do either one I'm not saying he's the bridge. He's not the bridge. Okay. So Dominguez, believe... is, Dominguez is in double A right now, you know, knocking on okay, the door. Right. So Dominguez could theoretically be ready to go next season, right? Yeah, Maybe absolutely. we'll see him late this and that's season my, as that's a my spring thing. training. As that's a what I'm September. saying. The choice okay. is you go out, you, you could sign Harrison Bader, but if you're, if you are, if you are signing Harrison Bader, you're either thinking that Dominguez is not that guy and you know, maybe he's traded at the deadline here or you know he's a he's a left fielder and not a center fielder, which is very and that's a lot, well. and, and that is a lot easier to handle if Bader is injured. You can replace left field easier 
Yankees haven't been able to do it, but they've also been trying no, to No, I mean, Dominguez is a left fielder, fielder, not Harrison Bader. Harrison Bader is a center fielder. Harrison Bader is one of the best center fielders out there. But Dominguez, if they're coming up, you can, you can, if they believe he's a better corner outfielder than a center fielder defensively, you still at least have no, the I know. ability to come out there and throw. And just, just sign if, IKF forever as well, by the way. <laughs> if you're, if you're, uh, well, Donaldson now can pitch too. So Don, Don, between Donaldson and IKF, they've got they've got two Shohei Otani's on on the team. And by the way, we we did mess up. I, we got a lot of I very rarely read comments, but I read the comments from last episode. the The DH rule was implemented last season for Otani, so he can yeah. stay in the game after he pitches. So but yeah, we knew that sixty five million dollars a year. So when we but when we got back to, I thought we got to that. No, I said I said that he had he came out of the game, which he originally when he was signed did but as of last year he can stay in the game after he comes out as a pitcher yes but there's still uh the dh that that whoever was playing dh up to that point has to come yes, out of the game yes this, because otani replaces the, him as at the DH. end of that conversation we got there right because someone's still got to take that roster spot doesn't if the pitchers come if there's another pitcher coming in we're messing this up again, Logan. Correct us. Because so if Otani's pitching and in the lineup, there is no DH in the lineup. Oh, so he, and then he, be, and then the he becomes, he becomes the DH. He becomes the DH. Right. His spot becomes the DH. Correct. After there he's is no done DH. pitching. And After then, he's done pitching. And then right. So mental <clears> gymnastics. <throat> Got it. Uh, yes. So yeah, give him give him his sixty million dollars a year there for four years though, not for ten years. Well, he's just not going to say yes to that. No, I'd sign him for 10 years, but not at 60 million a year. <laughs> That's the thing is that someone will, someone will pay him eight to 10 years at, at an exorbitant amount. Maybe it's not 60, maybe it's cool. 55, 50. Let's see it. But yeah, he's going to be north of 500. He absolutely should be. And don't forget he's young too. Half a bill. No, I know. But, but is he going to be a hitter and a pitcher in year seven of his contract? That's what we don't know. You have to pay for that. You can't, you can't ask that think... question. It doesn't matter. It does also didn't think not if I'm be not pitching. if I'm Otani and not Otani's representation. I don't give a shit. You, you what are you going to tell me right now that says that he's not going to be doing that in seven? Nobody could do this up until him ever. So go Babe ahead Ruth, and doubt Babe Ruth what the guy stopped can do. pitching. Babe Ruth just focused on hitting, right? Pitching. For probably a good reason. He, you know, I mean, he, he was a he was a Cy Young caliber pitcher when he was a pitcher. I know, but there was a fo- he, you know didn't really take care of his body very well. The uh, yeah. I'm just saying Shohei Otani is, is not showing anything. He's not saying anything or showing anything. I thought for sure, like first year that, that they were going to do that. I, th- I thought it was once crazy, he got the elbow, injury, but he's a freak. Once he got injured, I was like, okay, his pitching career is done. And that's obviously not the case. No, no, his stats. I tweeted the stats out. Like you look at his stats. He's got, he's got like in the conversation for Cy Young on the pitching side in the conversation, if not leading the offensive categories for, for uh, MVP, on the offensive side at the halfway point, his numbers are absolutely stupid. Absolutely stupid. When you consider the fact that these guys that he's doing on, on both sides at such an unbelievable high level, like I know I, I'm enamored by him. I don't know if that's been, been obvious, but like this, we're, we're watching the greatest athlete that's ever played sports probably at this point. That's not, that's not an exaggeration. It's not like, it's such an outlandish thing to say, but it's not an outlandish thing to say about him. He's doing things that nobody on the, face of the planet has ever done you think it's more impressive though him being a two-way baseball player than some professional athletes playing two being sports? two sports yes like Deion sanders or bo jackson being like bo jackson was an all-star caliber baseball player and an all pro caliber football player like i get it i you know tell me that that shohei otani couldn't do something in another sport and i'll, I'll probably put my money on shohei otani yeah, I think he's doing two of the hardest things to do that you can do in pro sports. That's hit a baseball and then and then at a high level, um, you know, shut sure. down major league baseball players as a starting pitcher and do both of them because both of them are just such a high, highly a high skill. It's yeah. it's not just like pure athleticism. Like Bo Jackson was just purely maybe the most athletic, um, one of the most athletic people of all time, but the skill that Otani has to do to be able to both hit and pitch is is next level and he might have the best power in major league baseball right now not next not not named aaron judge like he's right there he's 
I remember the uh, last time the Yankees played the Angels on the broadcast. They said Otani doesn't take batting practice. Which, which, because he's, I don't know why. Why like, don't you don't want to waste wet swings? I don't, I don't want to waste my wet swings on in BP. I don't know, but imagine if he took batting practice. I mean, he's on pace to to to, to come close to Judge's record from last year. He's on pace to you know high fifties, low sixties in home run total. The Angels should just trade him for someone's entire farm system. It's crazy. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely enamored by this guy. Because the Angels, they sh- they need to look at it like we can't win with Otani, so let's trade him for an entire farm system. Like, I, like I mean, when I, uh, you got a clean house in the entire front office at that point. Like you're looking at the two best players in baseball, and you you can't you can't you know sniff the playoffs. They're what they're like five games out of a wild card or something like that right now. It's eh, crazy. That's it. That's in the hunt. Just put put a baseball <clears throat> team together around those guys, please. So our our guy Boone got tossed again, fifth time yeah. this season. Got I mean, it was an egregious Sunday. strike call on DJ LeMahieu, a guy that you don't call. give an egregious strike call to either. He's a guy that has been around the league for a very long time, has been in the National League parks for a long time, has the respect of everybody, knows the strike zone, and uh, has a reputation for knowing the strike zone. And the a three-one count breaking ball that's like it's significantly up. That pitch was significantly up. You uh, you don't make that. No, call. That was a bad pitch. Yeah. So I don't blame Boone. Boone said it was ridiculous and that the ump needs to have thicker skin. He also did say that he thought the ump overall was good in the game, but he just was chirping him for that for that pitch and um, that obviously he got tossed and said that's uh, ridiculous that he got tossed. So did you notice early in the game there was a strike called on Glaber, which was a strike. It was in the zone, but. Glaber immediately looked to the dugout when the strike was called, probably complaining like, hey, like this guy's not on. And I just feel like sometimes those things like the player's reaction to things can cause a domino effect where the ump obviously sees what Glaber is doing. And then maybe the dugout, even if it's not Boone, if it's a bench coach or if it's other players just chirping a little bit anytime there's a strike call. And so I think there can be a just a domino effect that leads to a bad call and then the ump sensitive because he knows the team is already kind of getting on him. He makes one bad call. Boone says something and he gets tossed. I mean, yeah, that does happen, but that shouldn't happen because the umpires need to, you know, compartmentalize those things a lot more and not, not take things personally or, or yeah, I mean, I'm just tired of another the, player of has the been bitching. doing. And... Aren't you tired of the bitching about strikes? Like every you're going to get tossed for arguing balls and strikes. Yeah, no, I, it, it, but here's the difference though. If a, if an umpire has a quick hook and shouldn't for, for a little chirping, like you're going to chirp, of course you're going to chirp. If there's a ball out of the zone, you're going to chirp. You have to, <laughs> there's, there's, it's a, it's impossible not to, uh, when, when you have calls like that. And so if, a, if an umpire has a quick hook, uh, and is emotionally inst- unstable because you know, he, his feelings get hurt, then that's on the umpire too. Yeah. Boone's a pain in the ass and has, he's also on, on the radar for the, the tolerance, you know, the, who was the one that I thought was a real tweet to Karen, Karen Boone. So like the umpires are talking about this It was the porch, the porch sports or whatever. Yeah, whatever. It's, it's a, it it was funny. The um, Boone has, is one of those guys that the umpires know is going to chirp, know is going to talk about balls and strikes. And I'm sure are looking for it a little bit, but it's also their job not to throw an umpire or a, a a manager out early in a game. uh, If you know, unless something is excessive. So the last time Boone got tossed, he got suspended, but the Yankees responded because that was in Toronto and the Yankees had a good series and they went on a little bit of a a winning streak, um, or at least they played better ball after that moment. So we'll see if, obviously, they lost the game Sunday, but we'll see if that translates this week in Baltimore, if if Boone's ejection. It's just, I don't know, I'm I'm pretty tired of Boone getting ejected because I just feel like it's same shit, different day with him. It's like, oh, you're you're arguing balls and strikes again because the umpire made a bad call. Guess what? Umpires make twelve bad calls a, a game for each side. Like, let's move on with our lives already. Yeah, it, there's it's gonna on be Boone robot. For... There's gonna be robot zones soon, right? It's like, then he'll complain about that. I think it's 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 escalated when you see a veteran guy like DJ LeMay who has uh, as good of a control of the strike zone as anybody in the baseball. Uh, you know, that, that should have been on base and they know that, that runs and, and base runners are a premium for the Yankees at this point. So 
you know, it's, it's a, it's a culmination of all those things. Yeah. Would you say that DJ LeMay, there's more than meets the eye to him uh, when he's looking at balls and strikes, he can, he can really, I don't know. I'm trying to segue into our Oakley ad read and I'm not doing a good job. Oakley's established themselves as these sunglasses company made for activities. If you run, if you play golf, if you train, or if you just want to look like your favorite athlete, you can do all of that with Oakley because they've got a pair of lenses for everything. Their website is also very convenient to use. You can shop by sport. So you can select baseball, golf, cycling, snow, surf, and much, much more. So you can find the eyewear that you need. There's so many different styles. I'm sure you will find something that you love. They also have this amazing technology their prism lens technology they've been working on this for decades scott you're looking through some prism lenses right now even indoors i bet it's it's amazing just everything pops you say wtf when you see it if you want to find out more about the prism lens technology or if you just want to go buy a pair of oakley's go to oakley.com to get more information don't trust me try it for yourself was it DJ? Is that a picture of DJ wearing some some Oakleys? This is a picture of DJ wearing his Oakleys. He's got a very similar pair. So if you're technology, wearing, he saw that ball. Maybe umpires. Maybe every umpire needs to wear prism lenses. And that's they a won't that's a good mess thought. up. That's a good thought. I think we, we might have. We, that might change baseball. <laughs> I think I really Oakley really, might save really... the umpires' jobs. <laughs> Oh, man. Head over to Oakley.com for more information to pick up a pair for yourself. Thank you, Oakley, for sponsoring us today. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention from the Sunday game, and we will talk about the one game that the Yankees won, but uh, from that Sunday game, Volpe had a bunt attempt in the seventh inning down 2 nothing with IKF on first base and one out. He was obviously bunting for a hit because you're not going to sacrifice in a 2 nothing game with a runner on first base, but uh, ended up being a sack bunt. And that's just a a little um it's a little tough because Volpe's been their hottest hitter his last 15 games he's hitting 362 and he had another good offensive series this weekend in St. Louis he's got a 976 OPS since the stance change but like you said part of his game is bunting for hits and disrupting and so you don't want him to change his game if he felt he could bunt for a hit in that situation and he got it then you're set, you're in a first and second one out situation and great. But it also is on the flip side of that. It's like, want to see that guy swinging the bat right now, because then Bowers gets a double later in that inning. And instead of it being two to one, maybe it's two to two. Maybe the Yankees can mount a comeback. Who knows? Yeah. I ha I mean, we were talking about this before we started uh, recording here. The, um, when you, when you talk about the individual player in that situation, I think it, context absolutely matters and you have to understand how they get on base and how they how they approach their their offensive uh, plate appearances and a guy like Volpe if he's got the green light to go out there and bunt for hits to do whatever he needs to do to get on base um you know to exploit defense if he believes he can do it then then I got no problem with that he's the he's the type of guy that that does like you said disrupt a game disrupts what defensive uh you know alignments are and if he if he believes he can, he sees something on the, on the bunt side and, uh, and goes for it, I have zero problem with it. It just wasn't executed. And, and that's, you know, the same thing in, in any type of offensive situation, you got to execute. Um, and he just didn't in that case, he, he, he has been swinging the bat well, and that, that means he's seeing the ball. Well, he's seeing the strike zone. Well, so you, you gotta, you gotta put your trust in a young kid like that to make a play. And uh, so I have no problem with it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And in baseball, usually it doesn't work more often than it does work. Um, but yeah, he was what two for four in that game with a big triple. Like the, the kid, yeah. the kid was awesome. Really, all uh, ever since, ever since the, the adjustment, change. yeah, ever since the adjustment um, by our boy Wells, who might might have a job as a, a hitting coach coming up soon. If he's not, if he's not pro ready, maybe there's more value on the uh, on the coaching side. But yeah, I mean, he's he's been great he's been great and you know what like there was a play uh where the the cardinals were stealing third base throw down got behind um the third baseman and volpe made the runner still scored he made that diving play to save yeah. the ball and yeah. then a play yeah. like okay that's one of those plays that it, you don't see it it doesn't get there's no because the, the runner scored if if he had got that guy at the plate that's like that's it on was, his defensive highlights yeah it had no business he had no business being even as close as it was uh, at, at the plate, but yeah, Volpe comes out of absolutely nowhere, making an unbelievable diving play. You could just tell like that, that kid's got the instinct. So when I have him up at, up at the plate and he's feeling good and his instincts say, Hey, I'm going to bunt for a hit because I see something, 
um, that's a little that's a, a, a little off and I can exploit it with my bat in whatever way I, 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 I can, then I, I'm going to give him, I want him to do that. I do want him to do that. I want him to have the confidence that he can do that. Yeah, that's fair enough. And then the one game that they won, they went with the opener and King was the bulk guy, went three and a third innings, his longest outing of the year. And his, obviously his longest outing since coming back from surgery. He went three innings twice, or excuse me, three times last year. He went three innings all obviously before his, his injury. Um, that meant he obviously wasn't going to be available for the game on Sunday. And I would be kind of surprised Probably if they use him today. Or today, yeah. Today, Monday, we're recording yeah. this, yeah. No, I agree. I, especially he went, he went uh, what, three, three and a third? third? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, he's not. There's no way. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he he wasn't down. If we see him in the in the Baltimore series, I would, you know, maybe towards the end of it, but I would be surprised. No, he'll be good for Tuesday because two days off. I, think I don't know, is... man. It seems like they, they like Cordero didn't pitch for, what, six games? Another, like, another really long outing until he comes back. It seems like Boone and the staff has, has been giving guys a, a really extended outings uh, at, at multiple times. King was in that in that spot too at one point uh, last week or the week before. They've been giving extended outings. Yeah, I think though a long outing definitely they're going to give you extended rest. But I think two days is enough. I don't know. We'll see if it's a if it's a close Pitch game into the Tuesday. fourth inning uh, into his fourth inning. Yes, that's but a long. Just, I, you're not coming just, back in two it's days. Just from one, that, it's probably. one outing though. It's 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 not getting up, sitting down, getting up, sitting down. It's it's one outing. It's one outing, but it's a lot of pitches. Yeah. Um, and that because he, you used him as the bulk guy, burning him for two, maybe three games, you had to win that game. You had to win that game. Absolutely. And that was a, you know, a game that they, they really did piece together. And, uh, because obviously the, the, the rain kind of threw a wrench into things, but they, they used all, I mean, they, they, they emptied the pen on that one. And when you have, when you start with, obviously they emptied the pen cause it was a, it was a bullpen day, but uh, Hamilton, Marinaccio, King, Peralta, Canely, Holmes. You literally used every one of your 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 high leverage guys again ahead of Cole, right? So, like we said yeah. last weekend, ahead no of Cole, when Cole didn't get out of the fifth inning, Cole was okay. He pitched six innings, but and I, I just assume not, not good and Logan, you may have looked at this too. But uh, did did none of the they chose to to use a bullpen guy? As the extra man, right? So nobody was lined up in AAA, I guess, to come start that game. Is that is that what was what was going on? Because they have what two two at least two guys down there: Vasquez, Brito, who could so come up. I don't know if they were lined up. Obviously, Brito couldn't have come up because they sent him down to make room for Hamilton. Right. So they even on a doubleheader day, does that does that does that get I, rid of that rule? If he's the extra yeah, man, if he's the extra man, it does get rid of that rule. But he he just pitched for them. Yeah, so he didn't line up. He that's, wasn't that's line, kind of lined was up, and I didn't to. look at I didn't look at Vasquez. But they also need a starter on Wednesday, which I know we'll yeah. get to in a little bit. So because they're going to go with Rodon on Friday, yeah. They, but the All Star game is the All Star week is next week, so they they could go another bullpen day, knowing that they're they only have to get through the weekend and then they have a the whole week off. Yeah, they could, but also you know using your high leverage guys in one game all the way through it as opposed to the guys Vasquez and Brito who have been pretty good coming up again. It depends if they lined up. I obviously the, 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 the rain out through, through a wrench into the situation. Well, let's talk about the Baltimore series. Cause it's a huge series. It's a big week at Yankee stadium. And if there's one game actually I was going to go to, it would be the Friday game. Carlos Rodon is making his debut and it is Luis Severino bobblehead night. If you're a bobblehead collector and you can grab a pair of tickets for yourself using game time, the tickets are not cheap. The Cubs are coming to town. So that's a, premium national league matchup even if the cubs aren't a great team that's just a a historic franchise there's probably a lot of cubs fans living in new york city so they're going to want to go to that game so the tickets are not cheap but there's a good deal i think in section 213 which is the first base side main level about halfway between the foul pole and the first base for 90 dollars each it's a little pricey but at the same time this is a big time game against the Cubs and Radon making his debut. I know it's not the Orioles who you're chasing in the standings, but I would really want to see Radon if, if, if I were you. Game time is the easiest way to grab tickets to sporting events, concerts, comedy shows, theater, or whatever else you want to go to. The app has so many cool features and it's very easy to use. It shows you the trending tickets, what sections the best deals are in. 
and it calls out cheap options and much, much more so you can make an informed purchase. There's event cancellation protection so you can buy with confidence. And it also, you get the images of your seats before you buy so you know what to expect. The buying process is fast. It's literally just two taps and the tickets are done. They're sent directly to your phone. You don't have to go through your email. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code BRONX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, download the app, create an account, use code BRONX for $20 off your first purchase, and go grab those tickets in Section 213 to see Carlos Redone. Hopefully, have a good debut with the Yankees. The series, though, against Baltimore. Yankees are chi- – what, what, what are the standings now? Are they five back in the lost column? I'm looking it up right now. Uh, yep. The five back, five yep. back in the lost column mm-hmm. <clears throat> heading into the, to the four game set with Baltimore. The pitching back is of Baltimore. Uh, yeah. They're back five back in of second place is what you're referring to. Yes. Of second place. Yeah. yeah. Not a first place of second place. Sure, yep. Just making yeah, sure we're all speaking the same language. Uh, Tyler Wells against Herman Herman c- coming off the perfect game. There's historically pitchers have had letdowns coming off perfect games. Okay, so that's one thing you're you're hopefully not seeing this week. Herman has not faced Baltimore yet this year, and the Yankees have faced Tyler Wells twice, and both times they've hit him pretty good. So April 9th in six innings, the Yankees scored four runs off of him, and then on May 24th in five innings, they scored five runs off of him, uh, and they've hit a combined five home runs in the two starts off of Wells. And then let me just run through all these numbers, then we can just talk about the series. Um, the Tuesday game, 4th of July, matinee, Kyle Gibson versus Clark Schmidt. Gibson made one start against the Yankees and shut them down. Seven innings, two hits, no runs. And Schmidt has faced Baltimore twice. And the first time out was April 7th. So this is when early in the season Schmidt was terrible. He only pitched three and a third, gave up four runs. And then he was much better in his second time out. He gave up one run over five innings. Schmidt has been arguably their hottest pitcher. Right, like has Schmidt been their hottest pitcher over the past month? Uh, Just might be, yeah. So um, hopefully Schmidt facing third time because you're facing a team for the third time this year. You can say the same thing about Tyler Wells. Like we're not even halfway through the through the year, and you're already facing them for a third time. So that sometimes does not favor the pitcher. Wednesday, Dean Kramer, Yankees have not announced a starter. Uh, Kramer has thrown one game against the Yankees. Yankees scored four runs and five hits off of them in five innings. And then the the final game of the series is Kyle Bradish versus Severino. And uh, Bradish this year also got hit by the Yankees on May 23rd, four runs in, in five innings. Severino has not faced Baltimore yet. So the Yankees are, are not going to throw Cole, even though... So Cole's going to have an extra day off, right? Because Radon's pitching Friday, so Cole's going to have an extra day off pitching Saturday. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I, I mean, and they had changed uh, Radon's start, right? Because he was originally going to be uh, thrown against. Yes, because Baltimore. he pitched a rehab game Saturday this yeah. weekend. Yeah. So uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't like that. I don't. I, I want Cole pitching in this series. You know, I, I want. I want Cole pitching in this series. It's an, well, it's he an would not series. pitch in this series no matter what because yeah. it, he would pitch on Friday. His day is Friday. Yeah. So he, he wouldn't. The thing is, if Radon was able to go on it was, Wednesday, but it but didn't work threw, out with the rehab schedule. Obviously, he threw fifty-eight. So. Radon threw fifty-eight pitches on Saturday. So you're probably looking at uh, last time Boone said low sixties. So call it sixty-five pitches, sixty-five to seventy pitches for Radon on Friday. Um, and the Yankees, I, I mean. Considering they haven't announced a starter for Wednesday and and you're not having Cole go in the series, it's it's I don't know. It's it's too you can't have a bullpen day that day though, right? You can't you see you can't sandwich a a bullpen day in the middle of uh, a big series and then realize without any days off. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you got to bring somebody up for that to try to get at least, you know, uh, a decent chunk of innings in, in the, in the middle of that, or you're going to, and it won't be able to be yourself. Brito, right? Because Brito was sent down at the end of last week. So he needs to spend the time in the minors. So you're looking at, uh, unless you know, there's we, an injury. Right. And you're looking at, uh, so you're looking at, yeah, who's, who's lining up for that, that, that start. That's, that's the big thing because if they do, if they do believe that they can get a bullpen day in there, that's really risky. It really is. Cause one, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, well, do you think they're going to see how the first two games go? Because we just talked about how Michael King 
is probably going to be off the first two days. What if they're going to pitch him another three innings on Wednesday? And then he won't pitch again before the all-star break. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I guess if this is a guy that hasn't done that in a while, this is, it's, it's risky. It's a, it's a risky move. It's uh, risky. Uh, it's really risky because if you have, you have two games ahead of this as well, and you're, you're assuming Schmidt and, uh, and, and Herman are, are able to, well, Herman's you... just going to pitch another perfect game. So we don't have to worry. Oh, right. About that. So, the, so you'll get length there. Uh, but that's a, it's, it's, it's very risky if you're not bringing somebody up like bottom line, because you're, you're, you're messing around with. Uh, a very depleted bullpen. If you're trying to get a bullpen day out of Wednesday, you're mes- you're, you're you're really dancing around a the potential of having a, an extremely uh, beat up bullpen going into the Chicago series. Which I know that the the breaks on the other half, but you got to finish the first half, and you can't finish you know limping in as they've done in the past. Like that's not something that 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 can happen here. You're nine and a half games out of first out, out of first place. A series against uh, the Baltimore is extremely important. It just is. And the other wrinkle to this series is after this four games, they only have three more with Baltimore this season. That's so crazy. If you're, you know, you're chasing Baltimore in the standings. They're a good team. They've been struggling their last 10, but they're a good team. If you split with them, it's going to be really hard to leapfrog them when you only have three games left with them. Yeah, I mean – I'm not. I'm not concerned about leapfrogging them as much as I am the the other teams. It, it you know when you have the when you have the Rays up there, just uh, just cruising, well, you can't you can't catch the Rays unless you catch Baltimore first. Yeah, well then you know things just take care of themselves at that point. If, if that's the case, and then Baltimore's winning the division, so you're, you're 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 in trouble anyway at that point. But yeah, no, it's look. I'm looking at that Wednesday game as, as super important. But you have to Herman bounce back. Herman's already had had two stinkers ahead of the perfect game, so doesn't that take a take away the uh, you know the the letdown afterwards? You already did your letdown. You just happened to have Actually, it beforehand. You know what I was surprised to ne- not come across uh, in the whole perfect game coverage? Who had like the worst starts going into a perfect game? Because Herman has to have like rivaled that, right? Like he gave up something like. Didn't he give up like 15 runs in like two starts or something crazy going? It into... was egregious. It was egregious. So yeah, he probably. I can't has... imagine there's a worst two worst two games heading into a perfect game than that. He's got to have the most historic. unexpected perfect game ever. <laughs> well, maybe maybe in the World Series you're not expecting a perfect game as well. But uh, you know this is this has got to be up there as far as like performance and who the person is. Not not expecting that guy to do it, especially given that he gave up two. Uh, two massive, massive stinkers before it. So, um, yeah, man, look, I, I, I'm looking at, uh, those first two games, obviously depth of the f- starting pitching is extremely important. They, they gotta be able to control, uh, how their bullpen is being implemented in this game. And those first two games are, are huge. And then, and then obviously, you know, if, if Aaron Hicks comes in here doing anything, it's going to be, it's going to be painful. It's going to be painful. So it's almost like they have, have a to prioritize. Do you have a prediction for Hicks? Because like, I, I know he has. He's not been playing every day. I don't think with Baltimore, he's been playing f- fairly regularly though. I think. Do you do you have a prediction for him this series? I think he's going to suck. He, will he hit a home run? No. Will no, have, I think he's going to suck. I think he's going to cower under, because he's going to. He's not going to do well. I I don't see Aaron Hicks as a guy that has the ability to come in here and just turn it on because he wants to because of a revenge piece of it and just to shove it I, I just don't i don't see it i think he's gonna get it from the fans a little bit in the in the field um and i, I no i don't i don't i think he's a not a good baseball player over under two and a half hits in the series uh so three hits total it depends on how much he plays i guess under okay fuck Aaron Hicks. that guy got- you know, he, he screwed us He's got an 861 OPS with Baltimore. Like, he started off very hot. good. He started off hot. It's definitely cooling off. Definitely becoming like, you know, oh, wait a minute. Turning into a pumpkin here. Yeah. Well, he's going to – this is his revenge tour. So. This would be a great opportunity for an over in the entire series. Play him every yeah. day. There's no hits. O Give for four, over for 4, over for 4. Yeah. All right. That will do it for today's episode. Once again, happy 4th of July, everybody. Thank you to Oakley and Game Time for sponsoring us. And we'll be back at you. So it's a it's another four game series. So we're recording what are we doing? A a, a Thursday is it a is it a Thursday night game or an afternoon game? Do it. I think it's a night game, right? Yeah. Uh yeah, it probably is. 
there's Friday no, morning. There's no getaway day, so Harrison will be at daycare Friday morning, so I can <laughs> I can record. Yeah, probably Friday morning we'll uh, we'll record. <laughs> And then next week, All Star Week, we're going to be doing our GM two part episode, uh, trade deadline GM series. So, very excited for that. We'll talk to you then.